Greetings, everyone. It is National Black Child Development Week 2023. Welcome to the President's Address for BCI Atlanta. I'm your president, Dr. Bisa Lewis. And the topic of today is the state of Black children in Atlanta, and what are we doing about it? So on behalf of BC Atlanta's board of directors, our affiliate members and staff, I'd like to welcome you to the 2023 National Black Child Development Week. If you've been following along throughout the years, let us know in the comments if you were here last year or how many NBCDWs have you participated in. We'd love to know how long we've had you around as a stakeholder. I've had the pleasure of serving as BC Atlanta's president since 2018, and I adore this affiliate. The mission of BC Atlanta is improve and advance the quality of life for Black children and families in education in Georgia through education advocacy. So we support, even though we support Atlanta, we make sure we provide resources for our entire state as well. What is National Black Child Development Week? NBCDW, as we you know, use that, the acronym, raises community awareness about important issues impacting Black children and families. This year's theme for NBCDW is celebrating pillars of the Black community. So it's always my pleasure to speak on behalf of our youngest citizens, which is our children. So what is the state of Black children in Atlanta? Did you know that only one third of children in Greater Atlanta are having their early care and education needs met. And these needs are crucial for critical, uh, they're crucial for entering grade school and being prepared to learn. And only a third of their needs are being met. Wow. Also, did you know in Greater Atlanta communities with low child well-being, that only one in five third graders are strong readers? And this limits their opportunities for work school and life. Children who can't read at grade level by third grade are four times more likely to drop out of high school. We have to remedy that. Did you know that nearly 500,000 children in the 13 county greater Atlanta region lack basic opportunities and resources they need to thrive? Wow, 500,000, that's a lot. So what are we doing about this? So here are um, some areas that we uh, really pay attention to here at BCD Atlanta. We know that uh, for years, since 1981, that we've been at the forefront for engaging leaders, policymakers, professionals, and parents around critical and timely issues that directly impact Black children and families. And unfortunately, you all, we're falling at the, falling at the bottom of many of these measures, pretty much all the measures um, from what we're seeing. All children have the right to equitable learning opportunities that enable them to achieve their full potential as engaged learners and valued members of society. So we're working with policy systems and higher education to ensure that we are culture responsive, that children's unique and individual family strengths are shown and utilized, incorporated into the curriculum. Are people paying attention to their abilities, their languages, their unique experiences? So even though we need support in all the different areas that are uh, measured, BC Atlanta took on three primary focus areas to support Black children and families in Atlanta. So early care and education is one, literacy and family engagement. And those three focus areas were chosen to address those statistics that I show, uh, shared with you today. In early care and education, we know that historically, unfortunately, um, high quality education is significantly um, an impact, significant impact uh, on developmental outcomes for, for low income children of color. So if children are involved in high quality early care and education, it can impact change and it can support them if they are involved in culture responsive and developmentally appropriate care and education. So we're helping to make that happen. So we want to increase the number of black children in Atlanta uh, who are having their early care and education needs met. One of the things that we uh, started in lift, lift, Lifted Voices, we started Lifted Voices in 2020. And Lifted Voices has three uh, tiers. And the goal of Lifted Voices is to systematically address the programmatic needs of diversity, 
equity, inclusion, and social justice. So tier one of Lifted Voices, this is professional development. And what we do is we work with child serving professionals and support these child serving professionals with professional development. And it doesn't matter what color of their skin, what the, the people who are coming to our program and our professional development, we want to make sure that we are impacting the Black children and families in their lives. So one of the our biggest events of the year is our culturally responsive early education and care summit. Our culturally responsive early education and care summit. We intentionally have that event every February because it's Black History Month. And we hosted, thank goodness we're back in person at the Laudermitt Conference Center downtown in Atlanta. So we had our fourth annual summit this February. It sold out. Yay, thanks to everyone who came. And our fifth annual summit is coming up next year on February 21st. So a culture responsive summit allows us to serve uh, a large population at one time. But we also have individual trainings, which is tier two in Lift Your Voices. So our culture responsive and inclusion trainings, uh, they're often, uh, we have some self-paced and online, and we also offer uh, virtual live trainings as well. And this helps to uh, meet workforce goals, personal goals, and child and family goals. So tier two is our community level uh, professional development. This year, we're doing more of that through community cafes. So our community cafes are virtual. That way, no matter where someone is located, they can attend them. And then most of them are recorded and available on our YouTube channel so that people who can't make it because they're working, uh, that they can watch them later. Tier three of Lifted Voices, serving our early care and education uh, focus area. This is our fellowship offerings. So we have two fellowship programs in BC Atlanta. One is Expand ECE. ECE is an acronym for Early Care and Education, and the others is Lifted Voices, so two fellowships. Uh, Lifted Voices, I'll start with that one because uh, Lifted Voices actually focuses on policy and advocacy. In education, uh, we found that educators don't always know how they can advocate appropriately uh, without being considered lobbyists. So we make sure that we show early educators how they can fight for justice appropriately and still keep their jobs. So we plan to advocacy day at the Capitol. Uh, we partner with different organizations. This year, we partnered with the Georgia School Counseling Association because we know preschool suspensions and expulsions are high, especially among black boys. So um, we partner with them to go down to the Capitol and uh, support legislation that will um, help uh, reduce those suspensions and expulsions. We help write uh, bills and, and with other affiliates as well and uh, national organizations because we want to make sure that legislation uh, supports the work. If it's a law, people are more likely to follow it. So our Lift Your Voices Fellowship is our advocacy and policy fellowship. Uh, at the end of that project, they actually have to, at the end of that program, it's a nine to 12 month fellowship. And at the end of that fellowship, they develop an advocacy campaign so that they can go out there and do what we've taught them to do. So we love seeing uh, the different policies and uh, campaigns that have come out of that. Some relate to school nutrition. We know that uh, food in the schools can be detrimental to our health sometimes. So just loving the different uh, policy campaigns that have come out of Lifted Voices. So our other fellowship, again, is Expand ECE, Early Care and Education, and we have changed this one over the last year. We started Expand ECE in 2021 to increase the number of uh, Black leaders in early education. Um, most of our Black early educators in child care programs, they are Black women. And uh, the last study I looked at, it was over 60% of early educators are Black women. Uh, in our state. So we wanted to make sure that they are promoted. We're trying to encourage programs to grow their own, hire from within versus bringing in others who may not know the children as well. But Black teachers are often in the classroom, but they don't get promoted, even when they have the experience and they have the credentials as well as the desire. So what we've done this year is we have extended uh, expand ECE, and the goal is focusing on college degrees. So we're helping 60 early educators earn their associate or bachelor's degree. And our goal is to do that by 2025. We hope to continue to get funding so we can keep uh, people in school. 
we're finding that it's not the work. They're not, they're not having difficulty necessarily with doing the work, but it's life. You know, unfortunately, uh, in our communities, uh, Black women are often single mothers, single parents, and there are just a lot of different concerns that they have and challenges in their lives. So our coaches, our education coaches help them every month. They have group meetings with them. They have small group uh, coaching as well. Some get individual coaching to support them when life happens. So that way they can stay in school and finish those degrees. So we want to thank all of our partners who are involved with Expand ECE. So those are the three tiers of lifted voices under early care and education. We know that teachers who have uh, children who have a teacher who represents their culture and their race, oftentimes that supports them in improving in their work as well. So we want more highly trained teachers uh, who represent the children they work with. And because we're culturally responsive ourselves, all of the early educators in our programs aren't necessarily Black teachers. Um, sometimes there are other races because, again, the goal is to support Black children and families. If they work with Black children and families, we want to support them. So our program is also diverse. We practice what we, pre we preach. So we're excited about Expand ECE. If you are an early educator, you want to apply, there is a link should be in the comments to our early care page so that you can apply to uh, learn more about Expand ECE. So what are we doing about literacy? So to increase the number of third graders who are strong readers and reduce the high school dropout rate in Greater Atlanta, BCI Atlanta implements a couple of programs. Read to Succeed, we've been implementing for a number of years. And this year, we are doing a, a pilot for Raising a Reader, thanks to our awesome national office, NBCDI. So Raising a Reader, we've implemented years before, and they have come back to us with culture-responsive backpacks and STEM uh, materials for our children and families. So this year, we look forward to this summer uh, expanding what we've done with, with Read to Succeed through Raising a Reader by also offering more academic materials to support learning. Can you believe that in our 2022-2023 Read to Succeed program, BC Atlanta distributed over 3,000 children's books? We're right about, around 3,500 right now. Uh, and this is thanks to funding, again, from our national office, uh, partnership with Raising a Reader, also our partnership with GEARS, um, our mayor, the Mayor Summer Reading Club. We've been able to distribute, distribute all of these different books. What we love about these books is that they, they are culture responsive, and we know that if children see themselves on or in a book, they're more likely to want to read that book and enjoy reading. And the books that we offer are quality, and they're not all about how we look and how we're different as, pe as people of color, but they're about Black children doing just regular things like other children, uh, as well as their families. And I love that one of our partners pointed that out. They told us they were having a difficult time finding books with Black children that didn't just talk about being Black, about their hair, about their differences, but books with Black children and families just being themselves, just being children, just being families, and engaging in regular everyday activities. So we were thankful um, for these partnerships to be able to provide those books. Uh, our last thing I'll say about our literacy project is these books are quality. They're not thin paper with two staples. They are quality books, perfect bound books, full color, quality children's books that children can enjoy. I love seeing the pictures that our early care and education programs, our parents send in, even when uh, there are children who are not children of color looking at those books because they get a chance to see other children who don't look like them. And that's important as well. So with family engagement, uh, we want to increase the number of children in Greater Atlanta who lack their basic opportunities and resources that they need to, to thrive based on those numbers I shared, the 500,000. So BC Atlanta implements a program we started in 2020, 2020. It's called Powerful Families. And Powerful Families aims to improve connections for low-income families of color. The goal of Powerful Families is to enhance the capacity of child-focused agency, agencies to identify, link, and support families by concurrently improving their economic stability. So we work alongside the programs while we're working with the parents. So I want you to, to, to hear me say this again. We work alongside the programs while we're working with the parents. So we partner with early education programs, their staff, 
their teachers attend. Uh, they have a select group that come to our um, participate in our program while their parents are participating. So the early educators and the staff, they get an opportunity to see us working with the parents and they get to replicate those uh, experiences on their own. So our goal is to bring forth change, whether we're in the room or not. So we love our Powerful Families program and um, the, the information I read to you earlier in terms of the statistics came from United Way of Greater Atlanta's Child Wellbeing Index. And so our goal is to make sure that we are supporting those families who are under-resourced that, that fall in those low child wellbeing zip codes. And a lot of times it's 55 to 99% um, are children of people of color. So thank you, United Way of Greater Atlanta for the data and the partnerships as well, because United Way does not just share the data. They also partner, provide funding so that we can provide services and programs to improve those numbers. Um, so when people come to Powerful Families, I want to make sure I share this. When they come, we assume that they know best. Those parents know their children and their families best. We don't come in as the experts. Um, most of our staff, many of our team have doctor degrees. We're not coming in as Dr. So-and-so telling you what to do with your family or your child. We come in learning about their families. We assume that the parents themselves, that they want what's best for their children. We assume that they're knowledgeable about their own children, their own families, and we assume that they want to make the best choices. So going in with that mindset allows us to have a great partnership. And those parents in session one, they're spilling it. They're telling us all the things, all the challenges and concerns, because they trust us and we are supporting them in their, uh, in their efforts. So since we launched uh, Powerful Families in 2020, we have successfully served over 382 local families of color in partnership with our community agencies. And we've distributed over 400 early literacy toolkits containing educational resources to build classroom and home libraries. And each of those early literacy toolkits, they contain 10 to 15 children's picture books featuring families of color. We love um, being able to do that. So, you know, organizations in greater Atlanta, can, we can get a lot more done if we unite and we collaborate more, especially when it comes to um, alignment of nonprofits. So nonprofits with the same mission, you know, similar missions and visions, if we were able to partner together more appropriately and leverage our already limited resources and funding, we feel like we could really impact change a lot more. So BC Atlanta is really working to initiate more collaborative, systematic, two-generational approaches for children and families who are living in greater Atlanta. Uh, in, the, in the area. So uh, with all these different requests from family schools and partner agencies, we really need to expand our programming uh, to meet those needs. And here's the thing, those needs were already there before COVID and COVID-19, that pandem the pandemic is simply exacerbated those uh, situations. So our uh, needs outweigh the funding and resources. So that is one of the challenges that we're having in our organization. Again, our children, our families are following at the bottom of these measures and our resources are limited. So as your affiliate president, I am committed to continue this work to meet the needs of children and families. And you know, if it weren't for a community program such as these, I don't know where I would be or what I would be doing today because as a child, you know, growing up in Georgia, there were so many summer programs that supported me and my family. I want to give that back. So join me in paying it forward. It's very important that, you know, we give that homage as we celebrate uh, the pillars of, our, of the Black community during NBCDW this week, because it's those adults who were in our lives when we were young children who provided those opportunities for us to develop skills and confidence during our youth. I tell people all the time, you know, I feel confident going in any room because of those programs that I had growing up telling me how powerful I am and the color of my skin does not determine uh, the aptitude of my success. So we want to make sure that we are paying it forward um, and making sure that our programs have, our children have uh, the same opportunities that we had and more. 
we have to remember, we have to remember that our future is in the hands of today's youth. So calls to action. My calls to action for National Black Child Development Week 2023 I want to start with our legislators. Please reach out to us and consider our organization an advocate when policies and bills arise relating to our mission and vision. You know, we're already a partner with uh, Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. We love our legislators there. Uh, and we invite all the legislators to our advocacy at the Capitol. Well, you know, when we go, let them know when we're visiting. And we have our policy briefing every October. We invite all of the legislators. And we may get a couple, maybe three or four. So we want, you know, you want to pay more attention to our invites. We want to engage you. I can't tell you, oh my gosh, when those bills, last year, three bills passed uh, that related to culture, race, uh, and quote unquote divisive concepts in the classroom, and they slipped by us. And, you know, we were so floored when those bills passed. So legislators, please reach out to us and partner with us when uh, there's legislation that we should really pay attention to before it passes, because now we're trying to help educators discover what they can actually teach in the classroom because many of them are afraid. They don't know what to teach based on these, these new bills and these laws. To funder is my call to action. Please consider funding more programs that um, more programs than research, more programs than research. There must be a better balance. Every time our stakeholders respond uh, to surveys about their life experiences and their needs, they experience trauma all over again. So every time they're answering those questions, we're re-traumatizing them. In BC Atlanta, we're adamant about prioritizing services, services over research. We know, we know we have to balance that, but we have to provide more services. And this allows us to do less harm and more good. To our partners, my call to action, please implement projects more equitably. Statistics for Black children and families could be improved by simply implementing programs the way they are distinctively written in your actual funding proposals. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been at the table uh, after a grant project has been approved and we were called in as a partner and the grant is not focused on the children who were in that data, which is all, often our children. So in the grant, all these wonderful things were stated that will be done for Black children who fall at the bottom of these measures. But when the funding comes out, it's for all children. Yes, all children are important, but equity means that the resources are distributed based on needs. These numbers can improve if we simply do what we wrote in our grant, beautifully written in our grant our grant proposals, let's do that. And then to our stakeholders, lastly, anyone with black children in your lives, those are our stakeholders. If you're interested in improving early care and education, family engagement and literacy, we invite you to get involved with BC Atlanta. Here's some ways you can become a member and you are a member of a national and a local early childhood association. If you were a member at some point, please renew your membership. Participate in one or more of our upcoming events. We have events at least monthly. Make a donation to support our initiatives. You know, we could definitely use more um, unrestricted funds. <laughs> Subscribe to our newsletter. We have a monthly newsletter and then we announce any upcoming uh, activities as well. Make sure you follow and engage with us on social media. We're very active on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And you can find multiple ways to connect with us at bcatlanta.org or simply powerfulfamilies.org. So what can you expect this week for uh, NBCDW events? We want you to uh, register for the National African American Child and Family Research Center uh, annual Community Engage conference this week. It's Thursday, June 8th. Uh, you can go uh, in person or uh, online. It's actually a, a hybrid conference and it's hosted at Morehouse School of Medicine. It's complimentary. The full day conference is complimentary. I'm excited about serving on the closing panel that day at 3 p.m. You can also join us on Friday, uh, June 9th at noon. I'm having a fireside uh, chat celebrating Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens and his Atlanta uh, Year of the Youth. 
And this initiative ensures that Atlanta's youngest citizens have the resources necessary to thrive. I'm really excited about interview, interviewing um, and celebrating Mayor Dickens. He's done a great job coming out the gate. As soon as he uh, became mayor, he immediately started uh, leveraging resources and pulling uh, leaders together in our field. Make sure you follow hashtag NBCDW and NBCDW2023 on social media so you can engage with the National Village Network throughout the week. Uh, BC Atlanta, we're supporting all the villages in tuning in to their events. So uh, all the affiliates around the nation, we are making sure that we're supporting them. We invite you to do the same. Uh, if you're not sure where to go and what to do, you may want to go to NBCDI's Facebook page uh, where they may be posting and sharing uh, content from the other. Uh, affiliate organizations. So watch our social media. We're at Beast of Atlanta on everything. So at Beast of Atlanta, uh, and we'll be recognizing pillars of the Black community in Atlanta throughout the week. I want to thank you all for joining us to kick off NBCDW National Black Child Development Week 2023. I'll see you online and maybe even on, in person on Thursday at Morehouse School of Medicine. Happy National Black Child Development Week.